Good morning. Welcome to Journey of Self Mastery Fridays. So right now we have our music warm up. Just a little something to waken the senses, get you in motion. Good morning. So a little movement for your morning. So just take a little time to take in the sounds and allow it to flow in our one to two minute warm up, usually one. for joining us on the journey of self-mastery. I know today you are going to journey with us in regards to your journey on grief recovery. So welcome all you sojourners who are coming on this voyage with us. I appreciate you willing to have the conversation with us and to take us along your journey. So if you could share with everyone a little perspective about yourself, a little insight on who you are. Okay, well, um, I'm Sheila Mack, and I am the mother of six children. So I adopted three, and I had three of my own. So we have this beautiful range of children, all ages, and 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 they're all incredible. Um, and I, oh my gosh, I, I can go into so much about myself, but I've gone through some ups and downs in my life. And so you know, um, as young as being 10 years old, homeless, and then going into foster care, and then 
later working with the foster care system and creating over 100 jobs for for young at risk at risk youth um, who who worked at my gift stores. So so there was that and then I, I got married and had these beautiful children and raised them um, love them and you know how we do that we as parents we devote our time to our children and so that's what I did and over the years I got into consulting uh, leading online courses for real estate agents and doing different things like that and here I am so <laughs> Welcome, welcome. Your journey sounds spectacular. Just in all the different measures and things that you do and the fact that you have opened up your world and your life to actually bring on a new family. It's beautiful. I, I love what you're doing. So I just needed to say that. Thank you. So yesterday, I actually shared with everyone some, some information pertaining to prepping for this conversation. Mm -hmm. Because I know when it comes to grief that, at least for myself, from what I've witnessed, it's always that almost underlying ghost within. It's not something that's ever so present that everyone is kind of like, yes, I know I'm grieving and yes, it's here and it's, you know, blatant and obvious. It creeps up on you mm -hmm. and it slowly arrives and then the next thing you know, it's either, you know, that really creepy ghost or it's the oh okay let me listen to what it is that's being heard so I was really putting everyone in the place of starting to seek after what are the elements within you that you know could be places of grief that pretty much may have set aside and not really dealt with or really had the conversation with yourself about but you're also a little creeped out that it might come out later in a way that you don't want it to. Yes. So I'd love to know your thoughts in regards to the beginning of your journey with grief and <clears throat> then moving on into a state of recovery. Okay. So um, back in two 2017, I lost my home. I lost my car. I lost my cat that was grieving and that all happened in the Ventura, California fires. I mean, like literally it was the first night I was going to sleep in this new house after traveling the world for seven years straight. And so I was so happy, you know, how you fix it up. It took me about a month, paint the walls, make it amazing. And, and um, then we lost that house. So that was one form of grieving. This year, we're going through a different form of grieving, obviously, with what's happened that's taken us by surprise globally. And th there's just a lot going on in our world right now to cause grief. Um, I, I changed, like within a week, I knew I was getting depressed and it was really subtle. And I don't do depressed. I'm like, I don't even know how to do dep depressed. It's not part of who I am. And so it's kind of funny because I was like, wait a minute. I'm not going to the gym. I haven't unpacked the boxes. I literally was staying at, I had this prefab mobile home and I had made it into a, like a vacation rental. And so they were all full. Everybody needed to, a place to stay. So I'm staying in the storage shed where you keep the towels and it's about 400 square feet. And I decided I needed to change my mindset. So I'm jumping up and down on the rebounder. I'm saying affirmations. I'm doing the things that, you know, you kind of do. I, I, ended up borrowing a beater car from the sun that crashed one of my cars. And so I'm out the car too, you know? And um, so I'm doing all that. And, you know, my son said, oh, wow, you souped up the car. Cause I went to the dollar store and I bought all these stickers, blessed and flow and, you know, these kind of things. And I, I made it the best. I had to do the best I could with where I was at. Mm -hmm. And you know, within a month, I was invited to move to Beverly Hills, which is like, okay, wow, I, you know, I thought Ventura. <laughs> and, and so I, I got a new uh, position and moved over there, and it was wonderful. I went back a month later, and most of the people were in that same state mentally as the day the fire hit. In fact, I think the fire was still burning. And I had, like, changed my whole life. I already replaced my car, all these beautiful things. So it was part of the different way I approached what was going on. You know, it was that moment of decision, as Tony Robbins says, that changed the destiny for me anyway. And I, I sat down when I was clearing out that little shit and moving to my new home. And I sat down and I said, you know what? I felt so alone. 
everybody was going through the same soup, the fire at that time. And it wasn't, you know, we, we're showing up as a mom, showing up in the community for our businesses. And I needed to realize that sometimes we need to ask for help when we need it, which is really hard for us ladies, I think sometimes. And also to it, it create this community. So that's what I did and I wrote this book and <laughs> it actually just came out the other day, Bootstraps and Bra Straps, the formula to go from rock bottom back into action in any situation. And there's always a situation in life. Many blessings, many beautiful things have happened. Um, I remember I showed this to one of my sons and he said, oh, I love this book. I'm, I'm so proud of you, mom, you know? And he was just that kind of kid. And I say was because this book was supposed to come out in January. And in December, December 21st, my son went to sleep at his grandma's house. I was flying back to see him from traveling and he, he did not wake up. He had a heart condition. Mm. Yeah, from fifth grade, we kind of knew, but we didn't, you know, they said, okay, they fixed it. They did ablation. It was Wolf Parkinson White. And it's this weird syndrome that a lot, like maybe 2% of the population actually has this. And it's like arrhythmias. And so um, that was, whoa, you know, that's, that's different because I, my first chapter, I go into grieving and I've lost relatives. All my, my family has passed. And even though I went into foster care, I actually bought my, my mother a home. I took care of every single relative until they passed. So, you know, that was one form of grieving and losing a young child is a little bit different. It's the same, but it's a little, a little different. Mm -hmm. And so I put my book on hold and everything on hold. One of my, my, my daughters moved home with me and, you know, you just have to do the next right action and then you do the next one and you take these little steps and you know you go through the stages of shock and grief and you know you're numb and you can't feel anything and you get back on track but then it hits you again and you know one of the things i told my daughter was i said you know what you have permission right now when you're going through this you have permission to cry to scream to yell to be angry i don't care what you do but i want you to get it all out as much as you need to, it's all okay. And, and I, as a parent, was really good about sharing my emotions. Like I would actually go call my kids that weren't home or go to my daughter and say, hey, you know what, I need to cry right now. And I want you to see this. And, I, you know, and, and, we, and then she'll come to me and sometimes it was in the middle of the night at first and say, oh, you know, this just hit me. Okay, it's three in the morning. But, you know, and that's what we did. And, you know, the thing about grieving is we all go through the grieving process a little bit differently, um, depending on how we were raised, our, our cultural, religious background, all these different things uh, play a role. And yet we still have the choice. So there's, you know, are we deciding to suffer for 25 years and talk about this as, as, a, as a victim or say, you know, I honor my son's life and I celebrate him. However, I do need to move forward for myself to, to model for my children how to move forward. So there's that boundary of, you know, not getting stuck in any kind of, you know, we don't want to talk about what's going on this year at COVID for like 30 years later. Well, it was because of COVID, my life got ruined. No, you know, that's a choice. And yeah. so, you know, whatever, it could be X, Y, Z. It doesn't matter what the, the problem was. It's just, you know, how we decide to deal with it and to honor it, honor the grieving process, honor those sacred moments where you need to be with your family, where you need to put a project that you care about on hold because that's really more important than, you know, you're going to get through it better if you give yourself the gift of time. Yeah. And so because we have viewers who are in various stages of life, various ages, various professions, I want to try to break this down so that multiple people can consume the information. Because there are some people who are in the midst of grief right now. It's very obvious and blatant to them. They know they're going through it. They understand that that is their stage. And then there are other people where it's the ghost. It's that underlying creeping, you know, feeling sound that they're looking to 
run away from, avoid, not sure what it is. It's just uncomfortable and really just trying to sit in, in that space of, I don't know. Right. And before I move into that, we do have a comment from, I think it's Lube, um, who says, how are you doing today, sisters? We are doing well. <laughs> so I just wanted to make sure I address the comment. Uh, but when it comes to that space, so I wanted to break it down a little bit that when it comes to grieving, what have you seen are like, what are the underlying symptoms? What are the, the, the items that initially come out in the stages of grief? Well, obviously you're gonna, at least for many people, it's a shock because you know, even if the person's really, really, really old, you still are shocked because they're transitioning to a different realm. And it's shocking because they're a big part of your life. So you get hit with actually, I mean, my daughter and I had physical symptoms of, you know, oh my gosh, are we having a heart attack? Are we having, you know, what's going on? You, you know, like literally that bad where you're feeling like, you know, all this, it's like a panic attack, I guess you would say for us. And my daughter's like, okay, well, I'm 23, so I don't have this going on, but I do. And, mm -hmm. and we, you know, talk to a doctor friend and nurses and they're like, don't worry you're not don't go to the emergency room right now you're good it's because you're going through your body is going through shock and you're literally coming off of shock now that was like the first a few hours the first day and it would come in waves and go and it was kind of surreal you don't believe it you don't your our brains it takes a while for our brains to catch up to a new reality when somebody leaves us like that it, and and so there's a shift that happens mentally, I think, and, and we have to kind of refocus. And then it was, um, of course, you're crying and, and then numb. And we went through, we talked a lot. You know, we talked to, um, we had the services with Agape Spiritual Center in LA and, and we had lots of people in that group. It's really important to get groups and friends and family together to support you through that. And I said, oh, I need to ask now. I need to humble myself and I can't be strong, Sheila. <laughs> I have to ask for help when I need it. And that's really, really important to like say, yeah, I need help right now. Right now, I don't want to do this, you know? And, and I need, you know, if, I, if I'm with a group of other people, even the people that send a prayer and a blessing or a message, I'm telling you, in those first few days, that first week, that carried us through. And I'm telling my daughter and I, we both felt that. And so when you're sending a loved one something or checking in on them, it's really going to make a difference. And I know um, for my daughter and my sons finally came in too, and everybody else in the family, a lot of them were like, well, some of my friends, these are, this was a young kid that passed away you know he was 22 my son and wow. and so yeah and so these are young people it's a little different perspective and the ones that hadn't lost a loved one weren't able to give the, the same support or understanding you know and and my daughter was especially was like hey why don't they get this you know, I don't want to go to the Christmas party right now. This just mm -hmm. happened. And it, it, the perspective is very different. And so when you're going through the grieving process, you're going to get people that give you advice. And you're going to get people that maybe haven't experienced something like this. And they're going to be like, why aren't you okay yet? Or, or you know, let's go to the next party. And you may not be ready for that. And it doesn't matter how long it is for you, but you honor you. And that's okay that they don't understand. It's, it's not personal. It's not against you. It's just what it is. So you just take care of what you need and what your family needs first. So that's absolutely I, I really appreciate that you broke it down in those elements because for our viewers when it comes to those who are dealing with grief on a variety of levels whether you have lost a loved one or it's something in which you have lost a job FYI there is grief there yes especially if you have a long tie with that 
with that job or with the organization or with the people within that organization. It feels like losing a family and a full connection. And for some people, it's the loss of, it feels like you're losing your identity. And so I, I want to make sure that I'm acknowledging that as well, because those are the spaces of the, the ghostly grief, mm -hmm. where you're thinking, I shouldn't be grieving this. It's a job, right? It's an organization, and I should be able to move on from it. But pushing that down is what makes it the creepy ghost, right? Mm -hmm. It makes it pop up later on in ways that you are absolutely 100% uncomfortable with. And the space of grief, um, what I love about what you're saying, Sheila, is, is the fact that there are, we all know that there are, what is it, five stages to, of grief? Seven. <laughs> That's a lot. And it depends. Yeah. So it depends on the person. It, you don't go in this special order. You go in whatever right. order you go in. And a lot of times you'll circle back and you'll circle back and you'll get through all the phases. You'll be angry. You'll be sad. You'll be, you know, hurt. You'll, you'll, you know, there's so many different parts of it, but honor whatever that emotion is. And if you give that the time to listen to it, to either journal or get a therapist, talk to a friend, get a consultant, a coach, somebody to walk through with you. And it could be more than one thing that you're doing. That's fine because that's going to help you so that you're able to process that easily. The thing that all of us um, who are parents have a grieving point when our children grow up and leave us. And, and we, we just, we had a full-time job for 18 years or so, maybe 20, depending on your child. And you've had this full-time job and you just got fired. If you did your job right, you lost your job. And that's a grieving process because that was a huge part of your identity, the school stuff and the, all the extracurriculars and doing the helping with the parties at the house and all these things have changed. And so that's a huge grieving process. And I mean, oh my gosh, I don't know, maybe parents right now are having a grieving process because they finally got over that and now their kids are home and they're like, wait, I just lost my freedom again. Yes. <laughs> the kids are feeling the same way. They're like, wait, I have to live with my parents because my university didn't open. And you know, they, at this point in life, they want to go out and have that freedom and space. And so, and to have your parent there, I have a whole chapter on, on dealing with with both sides of the parenting when you become an adult and, and how to deal with your parents and, and change that relationship into something really beautiful. I mean, I am so grateful. My kids and I, we got together right after all this and um, we sat in the backyard with the, once we went into this, you know, stay at home orders and all these crazy things. And we, we got together and we're in the backyard, we're having a barbecue and we're talking and my daughter comes in, you know, she's, she's my verbal one. And she takes after me the most, I guess. And, and she says, you know, this year for our family, we really needed this universal pause. This was the biggest gift for us. We needed more time than we thought to get through this. So when you think you're supposed to get through a grieving process in a day or a month, it may not be the case. Give it the time honor that time. And I think the other really important thing we did was a gratitude process yes. where the first couple days I was like, okay, I can barely like crawl, you know, cause this just hits when you lose a loved one. And I said, but what are you grateful for? And I'd ask the kids and I'd say, this is what I'm grateful for. And we'd have to like really pull it things to be grateful for at that moment, but it helped. And the other thing is our minds tend to go to the moment it happened. Whatever, you lost a loved one, you lost your job, and you'll replay what car accident, whatever it is, you replay this tough situation. And every time we go back and mentally replay the situation, we physically, mentally are there. And we're like going, yeah, we're, we're putting ourselves through hell every single time, but it's like the brain is protecting us. It's like an automatic response to a, a shocking grief stricken situation, you're going to go there. And so from the first day going forward, I talked to my kids about 
retraining our brains about when we go there, it's okay to feel all the emotions and then put in a little happy thought, a happy memory, something. I mean, my son even had posted on his Instagram page, you know, be happy and have some pancakes and, you know, don't let anything, I don't know how he said it, but it was really cute and it was about staying happy. And I think he may have had a knowing. I mean, he even asked for it, he never asked for anything. He asked for his Christmas gift early. Um, you know, he wanted a new computer for his new classes. And I said, you know, Michael, that's a gaming computer. He said, yeah, I know. <laughs> you know, and so <laughs> that, that's not for college, but, but it was okay. I gave it to him, but you know, and, and so you just have to honor those kind of, see how I'm laughing and, and yeah. going back to a healthier, happier memory so that we're not stuck 20 years later in the sad part you know, it's still going to hit us. We'll still have it, but yes. <laughs> yeah, I love that. So a quick shout out to Brazil. I see you within the chat. So hi, Brazil. Um, I also wanted to acknowledge what you're, what you're highlighting in, number one, that when it comes to the grief, there are various levels and various stages to it, and that there are varying degrees in regards to um, how that grief comes about. So I want everyone to understand that no form of grief is too minor or too great, right? Because I love the fact that you highlighted parents separating from their children going to college. Um, the students themselves who are now at home and going, now I've lost my freedom. Yes. And that's a form of grief for them, right? Those who have lost their jobs and those who feel like they've lost a form of identity, um, those who are dealing even with this Black Lives Matter who are now going through a new transition of who am I now in this mm -hmm. space, knowing these pieces and these things about myself. Um, life after COVID, life during COVID, right? All these little pieces end up doing a stacking in what it is that you are seeing. And if you're not acknowledge acknowledging them as actual elements or points of grief mm -hmm. no matter how small or big that they are then that stacking becomes that creepy ghost that i that we've been talking about and pops up later in a very awkward way mm -hmm. so i love i love what you're saying and then when it comes to the transitioning so we We've highlighted for everyone what grief looks like, what are the different elements and different ways in which it plays out, how you should actually pay attention. I love what you were stating in the beginning stages of acknowledging grief is really just taking the next right step. Yes. So I'd like to speak more about that. So for those who are now, even just through this conversation, realizing, oh my goodness, yeah, I do have grief that I haven't acknowledged until now. What, what are some of the, I guess, self-talk conversations of the next right step? Okay, so for me and in my book, I wrote out the boots formula. So the B in the boots formula is for who am I being in all that I'm doing? And who do I need to be during this situation? How do I need to show up differently in order to get to the other side of this? You know, so that's the first thing, that first decision. And sometimes we have to really humble ourselves. I, I ended up in this little shed. Like, how do I lose my car, my cat, and my house in a day? You know, these kind of things. And you're like, but who am I being? I'm going to make it the best damn beater car I can. You know, it's, it's that. It's who, how am I going to show up? It doesn't matter our circumstances, our situation, anything that's going on. It's how we're going to show up. So that's really important to decide. And if you just get a piece of paper out and you write out a time in your life that you went through something, who were you being during that tough situation? And who did you have to become in order to get to the other side of it? that's going to call your powers and your strength. So, so it's very important to decide at that moment, you know, gosh, I'm the mom here. I have to be a certain way. I have to figure all this out and make all these arrangements. And oh, I mean, now you have to think, I mean, okay, shopping mm -hmm. at Macy's to buy suits and, and outfits for this funeral. I was, I broke out crying in the middle of Macy's over socks. 
Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, you know, I'm not kidding. I mean, this was like day two. And, and I didn't eat in Beverly Hills at the Beverly Center. And I did not give a, you know what, who cares who saw me? And my daughter was laughing and crying with me because then we started laughing. We brought joy into even a very hard situation. And we we're laughing at how silly we must look because they don't know our story. They don't know what's going on. They think these crazy people, they're crying over stocks in the middle of Macy's. What is up? <laughs> you know, so... So it's being able to do that. So that's one of the steps. And then it's, oh, um, the first O in my boots is for orientation. So it's like, um, like Tony Robbins says, we both went to his trainings. It's, it's not better than it is. It's not worse than it is. It is what it is. And so you need to be honest about, you know, 2020 even. The year was going a certain way and we all, this is the best year ever. We're in a, no, a whole new world in 2020. And it's been a really difficult year. So we had to change and, and be honest about, well, now I've lost a job or now I've had to transition everything and, and gloves and a mask. What, I've never even imagined that in a million years. And so that's something. And then the next one is order of operations. So then we had to decide what order are we going to get through this? Well, when you're grieving the loss of a loved one, or if you're grieving the loss of a job, whatever, you have to have an order of what steps you need to take. I had to go to Macy's and buy clothes. And I'm telling you those pieces, I think, you know, how we have these, these ceremonies, um, depending on your culture and how you celebrate a life. I, I think they really designed it because it heals you and it gets you to move again. It gets you out again. It gets you into action and flow, even though you are still numb and grieving. It gets you out in community with your loved ones, family, friends, um, whatever church or temple or whatever you go to or however in nature that you're going to celebrate your, your loved one's life. And so that is really, I realized, you know, going and having to do that, which that was the anger part came out. I was like, this is so stupid. Like, I have to go buy it because I can't like order it on time. <laughs> you know, and it was holidays. So Amazon wasn't going to deliver on time. And, and I was like, this is ridiculous. But, but it was necessary. It was part of the healing process. So just those little things. And then it was thinking. So that's the T in boots. And that's the mindset. That's where I had to make that decision of how I was going to show up and, and that I needed to be strong and do certain things. And then also humble enough to ask for help because I knew I couldn't do everything. And then the last is S for stepping up. And that is stepping up and taking the action. And like I said, those action steps were healing. So if you've lost a job even, or something like that, just taking action steps to, to go get a new job or do something part-time or even cleaning your house up or changing your environment, like you know, me souping up that old car to make it as nice as I could during the transition to something even better process, then that's what, you know, that's something, it's action. So it's stepping up. Love that. Those are great steps, especially in really just trying to think through what is the next right step. Mm -hmm. So I, I love that. And thank you so much for breaking that out and um, sharing that with our viewers. And again, for those who may be interested in Sheila's book, your book is called Oh, bootstrap Strap and bra straps. Um, the formula to go from rock bottom back into action in any situation. And I didn't have a crystal ball, but um, I wrote this. It took me about a year and a half. Well, from 2017, it was when I started the thought process and designing this book. Every chapter goes through a different rock bottom or tough situation that we all go through in life, these different things. And it also has activities and lots of extra resources so that you're sure to get the help that you need when you need it. Awesome. So appreciative. That, that is beautiful. I'm glad that you actually took your situation in regards to your journey and allowed that journey to be able to birth recovery for others because not many people do it mm -hmm. so many people are going through the process they recover and they move on and really just kind of keep going and 
actually start to look at everyone else really weird for not recovering also where it's like but if you shared the knowledge and the wisdom that you had then everyone else can recover with you mm -hmm. and so i appreciate the the fact that you've done that um in this space another thing i want to acknowledge in what you stated is when it comes to the actual next steps and changing the story of what it is that you are tying back to beyond the grief. So I'd love if you, could you elaborate on that a little more? Um, as far as, I mean, like literally it was a mental Oh no, your screen is freezing up a little. Okay. Is that better? I wonder if I'm not on the right internet. I went to the office for this, so <laughs> supposed to be the good one. There you go. That's okay. better. I mean, your screen is blurry, but we can oh. still we can hear you better. Oh no. Okay. Um, so you know, I think that you're gonna go back in your memory to that moment of grief, of hurt, of whatever loss. You know, hey, one day we were all going to work, and the next day we're on house arrest or whatever we call it, stay at home orders. <laughs> and it was, that's what my daughter calls it. And, and so it's like, you know, it's a shift and it's shocking. So we keep going back at, with, with the loss of, of my son. I, you know, I would wake up and I was in the moment again, my brain, before I could even think straight, you know, you're just waking up. My brain is reliving it. I haven't even opened my eyes yet. And I'm there, I'm starting to wake up. And I'm like, oh, no, you know, I know I'm going there because it's protecting me, because it's reminding me, because it's part of the healing process. But I also know that I, I must add a special memory or something right before that or some beautiful thought re, re, related to my son in order that every time I go back, it gets a little not easier, but different so that my memory isn't stuck on the saddest, worst part, but on the happiest memories and on the things that you want to honor about your loved one. And, and so that's, that's really important. And that's something as if you have young children or parents or, or your grandparent or whatever, when you're dealing with even the loss of a pet, which is something that is, is the same as a family member to many of us. Mm -hmm. And, you know, raising these six children, we've had, I don't know how many pets we've had, but, you know, over the years, they bring pets home. I don't know. <laughs> Weird pets, interesting pets, tarantulas, snakes, uh, you know, cats, dogs, the whole thing. And, and whenever we lost one of the pets, we had a whole ceremony and a process. And I would remind the children even then, okay, and we're going to train our brain. What was the happy memory? What was the good thing you loved? And it, it helps get you through the grieving process so that you're not stuck 10 years later. And I've had friends that you go see them 10 years later and they still tell you that was the day and they gave up medical school or they gave up whatever job and they went and they got in depression and they got stuck there. And 10 years later, their whole life was ruined because of this one event. And, and so that's the difference. It's, it's a very important process. Awesome. Yeah, I, it's, it reminds me of Maria, who is um, the organizer from Japan, that when she's looking at taking old material and throwing it out, whether it be clothing, furniture, whatever, that you actually take the time to say thank you to that article prior to putting it in the, you know, giveaway box or the trash because you're acknowledging what you received from it when you use it when you had it when it served your family or your home and now you're able to let go so that your association with it is no longer tied to the nostalgia or the memory of what it served you at for but you're thankful for what it did so i i appreciate um the fact that you've highlighted that because i think uh when it comes to grief recovery acknowledging a different story is so important and so with what you've highlighted i really appreciate that and i think everyone else will as well on what it is that they need to acknowledge in the journey no matter how small the grief is or how big the grief is 
to move forward with a story that's actually going to empower them in moving forward. So that's really all that I had on my side. Is Are there any um, additional comments that you'd like to make in regards to your journey of grief recovery? Um, well, really for my journey, not really, but for as other people are going through the grieving process, I think the most important thing is to be okay with that asking for help. And also, if you have a loved one who's going through the grieving process, keep an eye on them, keep a check in and see, are they getting through the stages? Are they getting stuck? Do you need to ask for extra help for them um, or get them to therapy or to uh, somebody that can support them, a beautiful support community? Um, that's another thing. I do have a Facebook group support community where people share their stories and connect and support each other through the different things that they're rebooting in their life. So I'd love to have you join. It's the bootstraps and bra straps community. Awesome. Well, Sheila, thank you so much for joining us on this Friday's journey of self mastery and grief recovery. Thank you everyone who joined us and spoke within the chat. If you guys had any questions or if you have any follow-up questions, feel free to post them while I post this video later. And I'm sure I will tag Sheila and anything that you have for her, she will address and you can connect with her page as well. I will include her information. Thank you all. And next Friday, we will actually journey we will have the journey of self-mastery in entrepreneurship, specifically in the space of construction. So if you're looking to see what are the elements within that space, if you are working within that space, or you're really just trying to understand, okay, I'm looking to be an entrepreneur for the first time. What are all the things I need to actually pay attention to in regards to challenges? And how is it that I can truly overcome? Join us on Friday. Thank you so very much. Appreciate you, Sheila. All right, thank you. Thank you guys and have a wonderful Friday. Everyone online is saying thank you as well. Bye. Bye everyone.